I came to the point where I just didn't care about anything. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do. Pete Cabrera lived by his own rules, and it nearly cost him his life. I was robbing people, I was in the hole. People wanted to kill me, you know? At some point, that would have happened. Pete had lived in uncertainty since he was seven, the year his father died. When he was gone, it was a big void in my life. And so, you know, my memories after that were very empty. As he got older, he became violent and got into trouble. He dropped out of high school and started running with other troubled youth, also living in the streets. I really didn't have a gauge for right or wrong in my mind. Don't move! Nobody move! We were robbing people, trying to find a place to live, trying to find a place to stay. Later in his 20s, Pete moved to another city and married the girl he had been dating. He took a job at a sheet metal plant. There, he made friends with one of his coworkers, who was a drug addict. He says, hey, have you ever smoked crack before? You know, and I was always wondering why he did that. And I ended up smoking crack with him and loved it immediately. It shut my mind down. It shut it down. It blocked everything out. That's the first time I really felt some sort of um, peace. But that peace came at a cost when he too became addicted. All of his money went to his new habit and he would disappear for weeks at a time. The guilt started coming in. You know, the guilt of, oh man, you know, you messing up again. And then that would just drive me to get more crack. And then it'd come down and the guilt would come in again. And like, all right, I need more crack. And so it was this constant circle of avoid what's happening. You know, avoid the reality that you are now a mess. <laughs> he also started sleeping with other women. Stuck in a vicious cycle, he saw no way out. You know, I got to the point to where I just knew I couldn't quit. And I would say, this is the reality of it. And if it wasn't the crack, it'd be the women. And if it wasn't the women, it'd be the crack. He and his wife divorced, and Pete moved in with another woman, and they had a child. He also fell behind on paying drug dealers, so he started robbing them, and he knew his days were numbered. I was in the hole. People wanted to kill me. I just didn't care. You know, I was at the point now where I just wanted to just die. He was at a crack house one night when a young woman overdosed. She starts having a seizure. And she falls over. They're trying to wake her up. They're slapping her in the face. You know, they're like shaking her, trying to stand her up. And she's like not responding at all, right? And the guy says, we got to get her out of here. They found her in a dumpster, you know, two blocks down of an overdose. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, I just kept thinking, I still see her face. It will never go away, like to the day I die. Finally, Pete saw the futility of a drug addicted life. I started thinking, you know, what am I going to do? I'm just going to end up dead. And that's when I started having these thoughts of, you know, why not just kill yourself, man? All I could think about was that girl. Pete reached out to his mother, who had become a Christian. And then she's like, what's going on? I told her, man, I'm a real bad crack addict. She said, are you done? I said, yeah, I'm done. She said, are you really done? I said, yeah. She said, it's time to give your life to the Lord if you're really done. And I said, you know what? You know, I want to do that. Pete prayed with his mom and accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. I'm like, God, I'm done. I'm done, like I'll serve you the rest of my life. You know, I'll, I'll serve you, whew. I'll serve you the rest of my life. Right now, right now. I heard of this God that can take nothing and make something beautiful out of it, right? So I'm like, I give you my nothing. He checked into rehab and began studying the Word of God. When I got out of rehab, and I didn't have the urges anymore, it was like I had this new addiction, you know? And it was like to serve God and to chase God and to find God and to love God. He married Katie, the woman he had been living with. She also accepted Christ. 
Today, they have a family and are focused on living for God. For the first time in, in my life, I understood like, what was missing. And what was missing was love. It's a love that makes you feel complete. And he completed me. It was like, this is what's been missing. It's the reality of God in my life. 